I have news to tell you about these regions of India. We have visited the villages of the new converts who accepted the Christian religion a few years ago. I bathed in the sacred waters all of the children who had not yet been baptized. The older children would not let me say my office or eat or sleep until I taught them one prayer or another. Then I began to understand the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this. Francisco Javier, 1542. Xavier had a dynamism in his personality that attracted people. You know, he wasn't just saying, now, here are the Ten Commandments. Oh, no, he was on fire. That's what got to him. So he didn't leave people merely convinced. He was infectious. And say, people would say, I want to be like that. What he's saying, I want that. I want to belong to that group because look at this man, he's, he's on fire. And that's what he was. The Renaissance was not so much an age of rebirth as one of recovery. Cities, previously emptied by disease and siege, swelled with new markets, revived arts, and religious awakenings. The population of Europe began to thrive. In the first decade alone of the 16th century, da Vinci completed his Mona Lisa, Michelangelo frescoed the Sistine ceilings, and construction was begun on St. Peter's in Rome. In 1506, into this milieu of enthusiasm and discovery, another sort of Renaissance man was born, one who would take the tools of this age and the faith of his people into a beckoning new world. St. Francis Xavier was a great saint, a miracle worker, a man who worked tirelessly for souls. He made great sacrifices. He, he was in love with Christ. He was born in Javier. He was born in his family castle in Spain. Had the same kind of chivalric uh, education as did Ignatius, but for some reason or other, I mean, early on, he ended up at the University of Paris and probably with the idea of being ordained and uh, getting for himself a nice fat benefice, that is to say, a, an endowed uh, clerical job uh, for a decent, honest, but nice life. By the time Xavier began studies in Paris, religious turmoil had gathered an irreversible momentum throughout Europe. John Calvin was just 16 years old, a student across the street from Xavier, but Martin Luther had already posted his 95 theses and broken away from the Church of Rome. During these uncertain years of religious division, Xavier gave up his dreams of high ecclesial office and joined a group of men led by Ignatius of Loyola who dedicated themselves to the service of God. They called themselves the Companions of Jesus. War in the East prevented a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, where this new band of missionaries hoped to convert Muslims. So they offered themselves to the Pope and promised to go wherever souls were most in need of help, even if this meant going to the farthest reaches of the globe. The King of Portugal had asked Ignatius for a man to be sent to India, and uh, the man that was initially going to be sent got ill, and uh, Ignatius didn't know what to do, and Xavier was standing right there and said to him, well, send me, I'm here. And he did, and it's a measure, I think, of their great uh, freedom, but also their great trust in God that Xavier was able to go and that Ignatius was able to send his best friend far away from him. And for the rest of their lives, they wrote each other these long and very heartfelt letters. God our Lord, knows how much more consolation my soul would have from seeing you than from writing such uncertain letters as these. But even though God our Lord has removed us to such distant lands, there is no reason because of any intervening distance, if I am not mistaken, for a lessening of love and care in those who love each other in the Lord. A vivid remembrance of what has happened in the past, when it is founded on Christ, can, however, 
be a kind of substitute for present experiences. Francisco Javier, 1542 My family is Catholic because of the great work that St. Francis Xavier did in India. If it wasn't for him, I don't think we'd be Catholic today, and we certainly wouldn't have this great, great blessing that is, that is our faith. If Xavier were alive today, and if he took a worldly path, he would be a great entrepreneur and probably uh, be uh, running some big multinational corporation and making a lot of money. If he took the religious path, it's hard to say what he would be doing, but whatever it was, he would be doing it with the same intensity and the same single-mindedness that he displayed once he uh, was converted and uh, took the religious path that he did. <laughs>